hey guys what's happening so i'm making this video because uh people have asked for it and um i'm getting a lot of requests for videos at the moment and i'm just aware that i'm not getting round to them and it's bothering me because you're not getting what you want so um i'm trying to make time to do this stuff now so here we go here we go how do i pick my colors right so there's a couple of answers to this uh some of them are more useful than others so First of all, the first way I pick my colours is purely intuitively. Now, that's not hugely helpful to you because you have to train your intuition generally and uh, and you need to have a, a fairly sort of solid knowledge of colour theory to be able to choose colours that work effectively. Now, if you need, uh, if, you, if you need to know how to choose colours, then you need to work a lot with colour and you need to make a lot of mistakes and <clears throat> there's there's no real substitute for practice. However, uh, recently, um, uh, Grimm's talking about this on his channel as well. This this idea that you can't just tell people to practice because what do you practice? So I want to get a bit more specific. Um, when I'm working with colour, like for instance. Um, Look at these yellows down the side here. So that is a, what that is, it's a primary yellow uh, secondary highlight, essentially. That's what that is. Now, in my experience, I can get two colours to work really well. With a yellow. Um, within the grade. One of them is a brown. One of them is a red. For this one, I used a red. Now the steps between a yellow and a red are orange. So on this, I've used orange. So I've, I've, I've taken yellow through orange all the way to red, which as you can see, gives you a very sort of bright, sort of pingy secondary light. If I do it with a brown, it's a slightly different effect. And, um, I'm not going to show you that effect right now because I'm going to get onto the next thing anyway. So I'm talking about because yeah, I'm talking about intuition and how I work intuitively, having learned these kind of things. So I don't think about it too much. But like I say, it's not very useful to you. I just wanted to show you this example of how I work with them colours there. Now the second way I choose colour, or I learnt to choose colour, is via the colour wheel. And this is very basic colour theory. It's very basic and I'm going to make it very, very simple to show you. So, this is the colour wheel. The colour wheel works uh, on opposites. The, uh, the colour on one side goes with the colour on the other side. This is a really, really simple way of choosing colours. Um, it's a, it really is as simple as that. So, if I wanted to use uh, a red and a green... I could do something like this. And if I wanted to invert it, invert the colors, I could do something like this. If we have another look at the colour wheel, uh, we'll take another couple of two uh, colours on there. We've got we've got a yellow and a purple that are facing each other on the colour wheel. So again, we can do this. We can do this if we want to invert it. Now this is a really, really simple way of using color combinations because obviously you're not you're not having to worry about lots and lots of different colors at this stage. 
that's sort of that's a more advanced thing really um I, I, if i were you i'd keep it simple really keep it simple for now the better you get at this the better you'll get generally um i've talked a lot about monochromatics in the past uh monochromatics are very simply using grades values of the same color and uh it's something i really used to do. By, by the way i would suggest people start doing monochromatics i found it a really really useful way to learn just take a color it can be any color but you've got to make sure you've got at least four versions of that color Mm, you could just about get away with three, but it's still not brilliant. You want four, really. About four versions of that colour. And um, ranging from, from, from a light to a really quite dark. Uh, it doesn't matter what you've got them in, really. It's not that important. Uh, if you're using paint markers, you could use sort of hard line solid shading. Or, uh, or if you're using alcohol markers, you can blend it. <clears throat> doesn't really make a difference. It's just about getting used to what what colour values do to your piece, how they add uh, add depth, and uh, that kind of thing. So this is I'm I'm aware this is a very basic video for some of you. Will think well, yeah, of course it's all obvious, isn't it? But I know that some of the people who've been in touch with me are at the very start of their journey on this, and are struggling to put just basic colours together, and actually. This makes it, the colour wheel particularly just makes it very, very easy. You can just see across the, the opposite sides of the colour wheel, they're the colours that go together. That's it. Keep it like that for the time being. There are loads more, obviously, loads more combinations. And you can begin to break some rules once you know what the rules are. Trust me, I do it all the time, as you probably noticed. But, um, but for now, if you get used to putting the opposite colours across the colour wheel together... It will give you a nice little tool box full of sort of you know a bit of a bit of armament for you you know a bit of something you can you can use on your pieces and you'll begin to see what looks good so have a go at that hit me back see what you think <laughs>